so very good morning dear students today is our first class on the subject analog and digital communication and this will be an introductory class and uh, we all know that this subject is very very important for electronics and communication engineers in electronics and communication 50% is electronics and 50% is communication and you can easily make out from the name that the subject is analog and digital communication so this being an introductory subject this subject is very very important from understanding point of view where you will understand what communication is all about okay so before uh, we will start with the actual content of the uh, subject uh, since this being an introductory class i'll tell you briefly about uh, the syllabus that we have to cover we will talk about uh, the course outcomes of this subject and then we will start with the subject okay let us now move forward so these are the course contents so here you can see that our course is divided into uh, uh, four units fine so in unit number 1 we have amplitude modulation in unit number 2 we have angle modulation you must have heard of uh, the term amplitude modulation angle modulation somewhere in some broad sense Uh, so you need not worry about if you are not able to exactly understand these terms uh, just you have to familiarize yourself with these terms so in unit 1 we have amplitude modulation in unit 2 we have angle modulation angle modulation comprises of two things one is fm that is frequency modulation and phase modulation okay so am fm and pm this is what we have in our unit number 1 and 2 moreover your unit number 1 and 2 are uh, dedicated to analog communication part uh, if you remember the name of the subject is analog and digital communication okay so uh, the analog communication comprises of amplitude modulation frequency modulation and your phase modulation next in unit number 3 we have uh, two topics one is pulse modulation and another is noise analysis okay so pulse modulation is uh, a kind of you can say intermediary modulation between your analog and digital modulation so pulse modulation lies between analog modulation and your digital modulation noise we all know that noise is integral part of our life similarly noise is also integral part of uh, Uh, our communication system it is due to noise we have to put in our uh, efforts to make our systems better okay so uh, all our effort goes in controlling the noise okay so that's why noise analysis is an important part so in unit 3 we have pulse modulation and your noise analysis then our last unit unit number 4 is dedicated to the digital modulation part okay so these days we talk about digital everything we talk about digital okay so in the same way in the communication also we have a digital communication so uh, this digital modulation or digital communication part will help us uh, in understanding the concept of digital communication okay so future is digital presently we are also using digital so that way your uh, digital communication part is very very important and uh, analog communication part we need to understand because uh, uh, that is a, a conventional uh, part without understanding the concept of conventional uh, modulation schemes we cannot understand uh, the recent uh, communication part so that's why in this subject we have both analog and digital communication part along with the pulse communication i hope all of you have understood uh, the feel of the uh, content which is present in this uh, subject on analog and digital communication next so these are the books 
the first book that we will be following is uh, electronic communication system by george kennedy we have uh, some other authors also associated with that but this book is popularly uh, known uh, by the uh, author name george kennedy okay so it is by magra hill publication so your analog communication part mainly we will be covering from this book okay another uh, very good book is principles of communication systems by tob and shilling this book is also from magra hill publication okay uh, digital communication part of your syllabus that we will be doing from this book okay apart from these two books we have three other books one is uh, modern digital and analog communication system by bp lati fourth is communication system by simon hakin fifth is communication system by ab kals so these three books will supplement our understanding uh, related to the topics that we will be uh, trying to understand from the uh, first two books so in a way uh, you can uh, say that the first two books uh, will be uh, our main books and we will use other books to uh, supplement our uh, understanding and uh, dear students let me tell you the book by george kennedy the book by tob and shilling and uh, similarly your book by bp lati these books uh, are you know considered uh, bibles of communication okay and in fact book by simon hakin is also very very nice book so uh, i'll recommend from my side that uh, you can uh, purchase these books also uh, if uh, it is possible for you because these books uh, will be uh, used everywhere till you get pass out and even after getting pass out if you prepare for any competitive exams etc these books will be very widely used okay and this is the first subject of communication that you people are studying that's why uh, i'll advise you people to read uh, more and more number of books uh, to clarify your concept uh one top uh, all topics may not be nicely covered in uh, uh, every book okay so whatsoever topic is nicely covered in a particular book that book should be uh, referred to and uh, one important thing you have to keep in mind that you have to follow books written from standard authors and standard publishers okay so don't go for locally uh, written books i have recommended all the books which are uh standard books okay so uh, please uh, follow these books okay so these are our uh, are our course outcomes so we have four course outcomes so uh, our first course outcome is to describe the basic principles of uh, communication system after this course is over all of you will be able to describe the basic principles okay then uh, the students will be able to explain the generation and detection of modulated signal that is our second course objective then uh, after completing uh, this subject uh, all of you will be able to evaluate the performance of signal under the effects of noise as i told you that the uh, noise is the main culprit for any communication engineer so as communication engineer our, our job is to evaluate the performance of signal under uh, effects of noise okay so after analyzing the performance of the signal then we can recommend that okay the, this particular signal is better uh, under this particular noise okay then uh, uh, course outcome number 4 that uh, after uh, we have covered this subject all of you will be able to examine information signals under various impairments and Uh, limitations okay and uh, i told you in the previous semester also that these course outcomes are governed through or governed under uh, rbt level categories uh, your red bloom taxonomy so l1 l2 h1 h2 these are the various levels of uh, your course outcomes so now about the subject as i told you this subject is very very important subject it will provide us the knowledge of uh, electrical communication okay uh, don't worry about uh, some terms uh, if you find those terms uh, different one or the new one these will be clarified 
in fact in today's class as well as in uh, the classes to come okay then uh, this communication subject is basis of most of the ece courses related to communication fine then uh, uh, this uh, subject on analog and digital communication will enable us to work effectively in the area of wireless communication, consumer electronics and other areas. See, uh, these days we are talking a lot about Internet of Things, we are talking a lot about wireless communication, we are talking a lot about device to device communication, we are talking a lot about machine to machine learning. So uh, unless uh, uh, two devices are uh, able to communicate with each other, uh, there is no meaning nowadays. So whatsoever device exists, we want that device to communicate. Okay, and uh, in order uh, to make that device communicate, we need to understand the principle of communication. So that way you can say that uh, the subject of analog and digital communication is very, very important uh, for our day-to-day -day, uh, life uh, uh, and as well as being communication leader. And uh, since this is the first subject on communication you people are studying, so it will help uh, you in developing your concepts. So uh, with regard to competitive exams also, this subject is very, very important. So if you can develop your concepts right now in this semester, then it will be uh, very easy for you uh, to crack competitive exams in the future. I hope all of you have uh, understood uh, the basic uh, uh, gist behind the subject on analog and digital communication. So uh, now uh, we will start with our uh, introduction on the subject analog and digital communication. So students, after uh, discussing about the subject. Now we move forward. So we start with the basic concepts of uh, analog and digital communication. In fact, analog and digital words come later on before uh, these words, we must understand what is the meaning of communication. Communication is a, a very uh, general word uh, and uh, we uh, hear of uh, this communication word very frequently. All of you have also sub, uh, studied a subject on communication uh, from English department also. And now we are studying a subject on communication from uh, uh, engineering uh, teacher. So uh, obviously there must be some relation between the communication that you have studied in English and uh, the communication that uh, I'll be teaching. Okay, so let us start with the, the communication word in general. So we all know that the meaning of communication is nothing but uh, the exchange of ideas or the information. Okay, so obviously uh, when we uh, talk to each other, when we communicate with each other, the main objective behind that is the exchange of ideas or information. Okay. The means of communication, obviously, uh, whenever a human being comes into existence, he used the natural means of communication. And uh, the most common natural means of communication uh, include uh, your voice, your audio, that is your verbal means of communication, or your visual means of communication, which include your video, uh, which include your uh, written form of uh, communication when we become uh, literate, okay? So your verbal, visual, written, these are your natural means of communication. Fine. So uh, these are the ways through which we communicate. Now, uh, the question arises that if we are able to understand communication uh, in such a simple manner, we have understood communication in... Uh, our English subject, then uh, what is the need to, you know, study uh, this communication now in the form of analog and digital communication? So students, uh, basically, uh, we need to understand uh, what are the uh, limitations of uh, uh, our uh, above natural means of communication. So uh, there are uh, three photographs uh, in this uh, 
uh, slide through which I will try to make you uh, understand that what are the limitations of above verbal means or visual means or written means of communication. So see if uh, two people are sitting uh, in a, a closed room or in a silent space, they can easily communicate with each other. Now what happens like uh, if uh, somebody has to address a large gathering, so then uh, uh, will the simple mode of uh, communication which was working uh, inside a room uh, work in the similar fashion? No, because if a person has to address a large gathering, then uh, one thing he will have to do is he will have to uh, increase the level of his uh, voice, okay? Uh, like if I teach you in an open classroom, I'll have to basically you can say shout or I'll have to speak at a louder volume level to make you uh, understand, to make you listen, whatever I want to say. Okay. And if shouting doesn't help or if speaking at a louder volume, volume doesn't help, then uh, I will use uh, a loudspeaker uh, to make you uh, listen. And the loudspeaker which that I have shown here, uh, it's not uh, electrical loudspeaker. It's uh, just, uh, you know, uh, a method uh, to concentrate my, uh, you know, uh, voice so that uh, you can uh, listen to what I want to say. Okay. Uh, similarly, like uh, if you are uh, in some, you can say ground and you want to call a friend who is standing uh, far away from you, then what you do, you shout, you call him and uh, you make him listen your voice and then uh, you communicate with him. Okay, so uh, these are the limitations that we have uh, in our verbal means of communication. Now, what are the limitations in uh, uh, our visual means? Like, uh, can you communicate uh, if uh, the street is, you can say, dark, can you communicate in dark by looking at each other or through your visual means? I don't think so. Okay. So what I want to say here that the natural means of communication, be it your verbal means of communication or your visual means of communication, they have limitation. Okay. Uh, so those limitations we try to overcome either by shouting either by speaking loudly, either by using, you can say, general uh, loudspeaker or either by increasing the brightness level uh, or arranging some, you know, uh, flood light uh, in the dark street. Okay. So still, <clears throat> if we use this, still we have limitation. Okay. So what kind of further limitation we may have? Now we will see in the Next slide. So now what I want to say is that you shouted, you make uh, one of your friend listen who was standing uh, in an open ground. You shouted and you make uh, uh, your students listen to you in your class. Okay. Uh, but you know what happens when all of you sit in your auditorium with a gathering of 2000 uh, students and uh, uh, somebody from the podium wants to uh, wants you to listen to him so will those uh, methods which i showed you in the previous slide work no these methods will not work so which method will work you will have to use a mic you will have to use a loudspeaker okay so uh, what we were doing by shouting, we were trying to amplify our voice signal in natural way. But that will help only up to a limited amount of time or limited, you can say, uh, amount of uh, uh, gathering. Okay. Now, in order to further improve our efficiency or further improve our voice level, what we need? We need electrical amplification. Okay. So, uh, by using electrical amplification, what we can uh, think of, we can amplify our signal, be it our voice signal or audio signal through electric means. Okay, the way we uh, uh, do in our auditorium or uh, in a big gathering, 
what we do we amplify our voice through mic and loudspeaker fine so here instead of using manual amplification we have used electrical amplification and why am i ca calling it electrical amplification because your mic and loudspeaker these are your uh, electrical devices okay so what we are doing we are converting our naturally occurring signal uh, into electrical signal and we are trying to amplify that naturally occurring signal with the help of your electrical signals okay so uh, by using this electrical amplification we could amplify our uh, voice level and we could um, uh, make 2000 gathering uh, uh, people sitting in an auditorium listen to what we want to say fine i hope all of you have understood now do we see any further limitation to this electrical amplification i think yes okay and what that limitation is see by using electrical amplification i could uh, have 2000 people listening to what i wanted to say by using electrical amplification by using mic and loudspeaker okay now uh, what if i want to make uh, a person sitting in delhi listen to uh, my voice if i sitting if i sit uh, i'm sitting in hisar then will electrical amplification work no certainly not obviously whatsoever kind of loudspeaker whatsoever kind of mic i use whatsoever amount of amplification i use i cannot make a person sitting in delhi listen to my voice uh, sitting in hisa okay so there you can say that this uh, kind of amplification through uh, your mic and loudspeaker will not work okay let us now see so as i just discussed what if voice or audio is to be sent from one city to another if we want to send our voice our audio signal from one city to another will amplification work certainly not so we will have to look for some other means through which we can send our voice or audio signal or our communication signal from one place to another place okay so dear students if we want to send our voice signal from one city to another city then amplification will not work then what is the methodology that we will adopt if we want to send our communication signal from one place to another place in that case uh, we need to understand how do we travel from one place to another place see dear students if you uh, correlate your uh, engineering concepts with the uh, uh, you know uh, your day to day routine things you will be able to understand many of the things in very very simple manner and uh, see uh, how i will explain to you the meaning of electrical communication through uh, the modes of transport okay now our objective is to uh, send voice signal from one place to another place so now my question is how do we carry ourselves from one place to another place so we carry ourselves from one place to another place by using a carrier okay uh, carrier means carrier means the modes of transport okay car is a carrier your ship is a carrier your aeroplane is a carrier okay so uh, we need a carrier who is more efficient than us okay who can carry us from one place to another place who can who is powerful okay what are the characteristics of a carrier characteristics of a carrier means it is more powerful than us it is faster than us okay we cannot think of walking on foot from hisar to delhi okay we cannot think of moving from hisar to delhi at a speed of 60 km per hour neither we can think of any animal running at a speed of 60 km per hour so we'll have to think of a carrier or we'll have to devise a carrier which will carry us from one place to another place 
and that carrier must be powerful and that carrier must be faster and obviously we know that car is that carrier bus is that carrier your ship is that carrier your aeroplane is that carrier okay so uh, if we have to move from hisar to delhi then we have to place ourselves onto that carrier and then that carrier will carry us from one place to another place and this analogy this similar analogy can be applied to the transport of information okay so now here what we have to do we have to uh, transfer our voice from one place to another place so what we will do we will use a carrier to carry our voice from one place to another place so same thing okay so i hope uh, all of you have uh, understood this concept now let us move forward so uh, this is your uh, uh, what i wanted to uh, make you understand that in this subject we are concerned with electrical communication okay means if we want to transport information from one place to another place then that transport of information from one place to another place will be done with the help of electrical means our carrier that will be electrical in nature our information signal will also be electrical in nature okay so students try to understand here that if we want to transmit our information from one place to another place we will be requiring electrical communication okay our original information signal means my voice signal it cannot travel from one place to another place even if i wanted uh, you to listen to my voice in an auditorium i had to use mic and loudspeaker but in no way i can make my voice reach from hisar to delhi so if i want my voice to reach from hisar to delhi i'll have to use electrical means okay so if i want to transport or communicate my information signal from one place to another place i need electrical means and i call that thing as electrical communication so in the very first slide the communication that i was talking about related to this subject that is analog and digital communication that communication was electrical communication so students i think now you are able to appreciate the difference between the communication that you have studied in english and the communication that we are going to study in this subject analog and digital communication so in analog and digital communication subject we will try to understand electrical communication or communication through electrical means is it fine i hope uh, all of you are able to uh, understand Uh, this point so here our first thing is that obviously we have an information signal that information signal is also called as baseband signal okay so this information signal or baseband signal is having normally a low power uh, signal and it is having low frequency okay as i told you that human beings cannot travel from hisar to delhi at a speed of 60 km per hour so human being was the original one original you can say uh, information kind of thing so same thing applies to your our information signal our original information signal that has been generated in the form of either uh, voice or audio signal or video signal or some other signal so those information signals or baseband signals are having originally low power and low frequency so we cannot transmit these information signals directly from one place to another so in order to transmit these information signal from one place to another place we need electrical carrier which will carry our information signal from one place to another and as i told you that the, what should be the characteristics of electrical carrier the characteristics of electrical carrier are it is a high power signal or having large amplitude 
and it is high frequency signal. Okay, so uh, same uh, you know analogy applied that we discussed in the previous slide. Your car, your ship, your aeroplane, these were powerful carriers which could carry us from one place to another place. We were not that powerful. Our carriers were powerful. Similarly, our information signal, original information signal is not powerful. It is a low power signal. It has smaller amplitude. It is a low frequency signal. Okay. So we will be transferring this information signal with the help of electrical carrier, which is a powerful signal in terms of power as well as in terms of frequency. Okay. So the way this small kid is riding on, uh, you can say, a mini car, in the same way, our information signal will be riding onto an electrical carrier. And this electrical carrier will carry from one place to another place. Okay. So, uh, though you may not be able to understand the complete details uh, of the figures on the left hand side, but just to give you an idea, uh, the first uh, is your message signal. You can see that this message signal is having low frequency and low amplitude. Okay. Then we have a carrier signal. This carrier signal, you can very clearly see that this carrier signal has high frequency and its amplitude is also high. So this message signal is the original signal that we want to transmit from one place to another place. And our carrier signal will carry this message signal from one place to another place. Okay. And uh, what we do in our normal modes of transport, we board ourselves, we put ourselves onto the carrier. Okay. And then carrier carries. So same is the thing happening here. See, this message signal has been put onto the carrier. Okay. Try to uh, just uh, uh, understand this thing in a sketchy way that what we have done, we have superimposed our message signal onto the carrier. Just don't worry about other detailed concepts. You simply uh, understand this thing in a way that we have superimposed our message signal onto the carrier. And now carrier will carry that uh, message signal from one place to another place. So this is the main concept of our uh, electrical communication or communication through electric means. I hope uh, all of you have been able to understand these concepts very good. So students, now after looking into the basic concepts of electrical communication, let us move forward. So this is the basic block diagram of uh, uh, any electrical communication system. And uh, now one thing uh, you must have noticed that uh, in the previous slides, we were again and again talking about voice signal. We were again and again talking about video signal or some picture signal. Uh, so naturally occurring signal we were talking about. And obviously our information uh, comes from uh, the natural sources. But since we are talking about electrical communication and since we are uh, uh, transporting our message signal with the help of uh, electrical carrier signal, obviously we need to convert our information signal also into electrical form. See, students try to understand this uh, concept very clearly that initially when the information is generated, that information is generated through natural means. And information generated through natural means is uh, non-electrical in nature. Say my voice signal, it is non-electrical. Audio signal, it is non-electrical. Okay, my video signal, it is non-electrical. But I have to transmit that uh, signal with the help of electrical means. Okay, so obviously I'll have to convert that non-electrical signal or my original message, which was in non-electrical form into electrical form. Only then I'll be able to make it sit onto electrical carrier. Okay. So that's why 
in electrical communication system the first step will be the input transducer what is transducer right now you can simply understand transducer uh, as uh, such uh, you can say uh, electrical uh, instrument which will convert our non electrical signal into electrical signal our mic mic is a transducer what does mic do mic converts our voice signal into electrical signal okay so transducer does the same thing uh, that it converts our signal in non electrical which is in non electrical form to the electrical form so our first step in any electrical communication system will be to convert our non electrical signal or non electrical input message into our electrical form message and that will be done with the help of transducer this is step number 1 okay so see we had input message first and as soon as we convert that message into electrical form it becomes signal let me tell you i am again and again using the term uh, signal okay so whenever any message is present in the form of signal okay uh, sorry uh, message is present in electrical form we call it as signal okay signal means in the electrical form understand this thing okay so this is our first block that is your information source Uh, converted to a message signal with the help of input transducer okay then uh, our second block is transmitter okay i told you what we are doing we are making our message signal bold on to the carrier okay we have to superimpose this message signal with the carrier signal so that our message can travel for that Uh, in our means of transport we were using a car we were using ship we were using aeroplane here we are using electrical carrier so it is the transmitter that will help us in uh, bolding our message signal on to the carrier so if we want to make our message signal sit on to the carrier signal we will use a block which is called transmitter so with the help of transmitter we will superimpose our message signal on to the carrier signal we will combine the together them together okay so you can see that in the transmitter on one side we have message signal on another side we have carrier signal so transmitter combines the two and with the help of transmitter uh, your uh, carrier uh, will be able to you know uh, carry message signal from one place to another place okay so transmitter combines message signal which is also in electrical form okay it also uh, combines uh, the carrier signal which is also in the electrical form okay and uh, now once we have sit inside the car what we do our car carries us from one place to another place on the road okay or on the medium or on the channel when we go from hisar to delhi we go from hisar to delhi through the channel which is available the channel is road okay so here in case of electrical communication this channel may be different channel this channel may be wired channel this channel may be wireless channel this channel may be optical fiber channel whatever uh, means of communication uh, through which we are transferring our information that may be possible so we will be using uh, this channel okay so with the help of transmitter your message signal will be boarding on to the carrier and uh, uh, then uh, since channel may be of different variety so this transmitter will also convert our electrical signal into the signal form which will be compatible with the channel what does it mean it means that if our channel is wireless channel uh then our transmitter will uh, make our uh, signal compatible with the wireless if our uh, uh, channel is wired channel say optical fiber uh, channel then our transmitter will make our signal compatible with uh, optical fiber okay so uh, if our signal is wired uh, you can say channel then your transmitter will convert our signal 
from electrical to that. So transmitter also uh, make our signal compatible with the channel. Okay. See, you cannot think of uh, riding a car and uh, uh, traveling through water. It's not possible. You will have to use that means of transport, uh, which is compatible with the channel you are using. If you are using air, you will be using aeroplane. If you are using road, you will be using car. If you are using uh, water, you will be using a ship. So depending on the kind of channel that you are following, you will be using that particular type of carrier. So there must be compatibility between the carrier and the channel. They must uh, resemble each other. Okay. So we have discussed about uh, your message source. We have talked about transmitter, carrier, channel. And uh, now this part, this is known as receiver part. Okay. So once we have transported ourselves through channel, obviously we will be reaching at destination. So uh, in this slide, we have a uh, channel. So as I told you that channel is the medium through which our uh, compatible signal will travel. As I told you in case of water, uh, in case of ship, it is through water, then road or air. And in the medium, your message plus carrier both travel, obviously. Okay. Another thing that happens in channel is that is noise. Okay. So when we travel from one place to another place, there are so many uncertainties in between. Our uh, car, it may get out of order. Road may not be, you know, very smooth. There is so much dust in between. There may be so many hurdles, traffic jams. Similarly, uh, in electrical communication channel also, there may be so many things that will, uh, you know, damage our signal, that will distort our signal. And uh, that thing we call it as noise. So in this channel, uh, noise will be added. And this noise, you know, uh, we cannot avoid this noise. This noise is bound to come. You cannot say that if you travel from Isar to Delhi, every time you will reach safely without any hurdle. So this noise is also uncertain thing. Sometimes the level of noise will be less. Sometimes level of noise will be uh, high. Depending on the channel condition, your signal will reach at the destination side. Okay, and at the destination side, we have receiver. Okay, so at the receiver side, the reverse thing will happen. Whatever we have done at the transmitter side, the reverse of that thing will help uh, happen at receiver side. So if you remember in the channel, what we did, we convert our electrical signal in the form compatible with the top channel. And when we receive the signal at the end of the channel, what we will do? We will convert our signal uh, from the form uh, which was compatible with the channel to the form which is electrical because receiver is an electrical device. So receiver will convert our received signal back to electrical form. Okay. And once we have received our signal back to electrical form, so then uh, uh, from that electrical uh, message signal, uh, what we will do in that electrical message signal, we have two things. One is message and another is carry. So now our job is to receive the original message. So obviously we will segregate our message from the carrier. We will keep carrier apart. We will take out message from the signal. Okay. So this output signal is nothing but our message signal in electrical form after removing the carrier. In a way, you can say that this receiver will remove the carrier. And once that has been done, with the help of transducer, we will convert our electrical output signal into naturally occurring form of the signal, which is non-electric. Like we will convert our electrical message again into audio message. So voice was transmitted through input message and in the output message, we have converted it into audio. Okay, so this is the basic block diagram of our electrical communication system. I hope uh, all of you are able to understand up to this point. So uh, dear students, now with this slide, we have uh, discussed the basic block diagram of communication uh, system. So uh, I hope all of you have clarified yourself with the concepts, basic concepts of electrical communication. And 
uh, we stop here and uh, we will continue uh, in the class next class thank you